On the morning of September 27th, the superliner Crescent Star, en route across the South Atlantic Ocean on the first leg of a round-the-world cruise, exploded and sank in seven minutes. There were 1,156 souls aboard at the moment of disaster. In seven minutes, 1,119 perished. 37 survived. The first thing about a disaster at sea is the wreckage. You become aware of the fact that there is flotsam everywhere, more wreckage floating than people. And then, if you are still able, you begin to notice two things. You become aware of the living, and you become aware of the dead. Mr. Holmes! Mr. Holmes! Mr. Whedon. Oh, you remember me. I sit at the uh, first engineer's table. Yes, of course. Are you all right? I never swam so far in my life. I don't know how I've got onto the raft. I've got a bad heart, you know. I was taking the cruise because of my bad heart. <laughs> what is your name? Please, tell me your name. Did, did you see her? Who? She was wearing a yellow nightgown. Is she your wife? My wife, Edith. Oh, God, oh, God. She's gone. Who are you? Middleton. Arthur J. Middleton. Well, it's, it's all over now, Mr. Middleton. You're safe and sound now. Did you see where she went, Mr. Holmes? Who? Did, did you see Amelia? The mirror broke all over her. She was bleeding. Easy. Now, you mustn't worry. They, they probably picked her up. She's only, only seven. God in heaven. Look, there's a dog. Here, boy. Here, boy. Here, boy, come on over here. Come on, boy, come on. Right here, come on, come on. That's the boy. What happened, Mr. Holmes? We hit a mine. What? A derelict mine. Plain bad luck. She didn't blow when we hit her. She went down under the hull. Bounced along and exploded under the keel. I Broke the ship right in half. In the uh, corridor, I met the uh, nurse. You know, Miss White. Miss White? You saw Miss White? Yeah, yeah. And she said to me, take it easy, Mr. Whedon. Just go to your boat. Did she get away? Did you see her again? No, never saw her again. Just that once, in the corridor on new deck. Did you see the stacks fall? The screeching sound of it, as if they were alive? That's so fast, so fast. They didn't have time to launch a lifeboat, not a single lifeboat. I was on a raft, I saw it all. Not a single lifeboat. They were just hanging there, dangling. And the sound. Forget it. The terrible sound. Forget it. Anybody know who he is? I saw him in the dining room. I think he's a steward or a waiter. Do you know who he is? George Anderson, a steward. Is he... is he all right? No.
here. You're sure we shouldn't have kept him aboard? I'm sure. Do you think we'll ever be picked up? Of course. Soon? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Middleton! Mr. Middleton! You were wrong. They did launch a lifeboat after all. Look! Off there! That's not a lifeboat. It's the captain's shore boat. Only 18 feet long. Couldn't we reach it? No. Can't we? Can't we? They've got their own problems in that boat. The gunnels are awash. What do you mean? There are too many people in that boat. Amelia! You're better off here. Yes, indeed, yes. Look! Look! What is it? Someone swimming! She's there. It Amelia! Is. It is! Come back, Mr. Holmes! There's sharks out there! Mr. Holmes! Mr. Holmes! Mr. Holmes! Mr. Holmes! Julie. Oh, Alec. Alec. I looked for you everywhere, but I couldn't find you. You're all right now. We're going to be all right. To die without Julie. you. Alone. Julie. Alone. Julie. Alone. Are you hurt? Are you all right? Just tired. Tired to death. We'll swim for the raft. It's drifting pretty fast. You hold on to this life preserver and I'll... Julie? Yes? There's a shark. Turning again, heave yourself up. It's Will McKinley. Good old Mac. Swim for it! Swim for it! Make it to the boat! It's safer here! We've got shark repellent all around us! They're coming, sir. Did you hear Mr. McKinley, sir? They're coming over. Captain Darrow has got Miss White with him. What is it? Okay. Mr. Holmes has got the ship's nurse with him, sir. Hello, Mr. Holmes. Hello, Mario. Hello, Miss White. Julie. Mac. Alec, am I glad to see you. Don't you have enough people in this boat? More than. I'm very happy to turn over the problem to my superior officer. Thanks, Junior. The captain wants you back by the stern alley. Is the skipper aboard? He's hurt very badly. Alec! Glad you made it, Mr. Holmes. Hello, Sam. How's it going? Can't get worse, sir. Except for dying. It can be worse. Ahoy, sir. Hello, Miss White. Cookie will tie off on the boat here. Pass us over a life preserve if you've got one. No, Mr. Holmes, sir. Captain wants you aboard. There are too many in this boat. Captain's orders, sir. Both of you. We need Miss White bad. But you'll capsize. No, Mr. Holmes. Hello, Joe. Me and the Aussie will take our turn in the drink while you guys are up. Sharkfin! Out there! Lisa, can't we have some more sharks, Chuck? Cookie, got any shark repellent up there? Mr. McKinley's got it, sir. We'll put some in here for the others. Not much left, sir. Captain Darrow didn't want us to run out. Well, use it. Aye, aye, sir. Mr. McKinley, sir. Mr. Holmes orders a touch more shark repellent. Tie that on, Mario. Big Joe, Miss White comes up, you come in. I go up, Digger comes in. Aye, aye, sir. You come. Come on. Oh, thank you, Cookie. Hello, Mrs. Knutson. Are you all right? I'm feeling fine, thank you, Miss White. Ah, uh, steady on. Sit still. 
Here you are. Hold this. Okay, Digger. Now, don't take any chances. Just tie yourselves onto the boat here. Skipper? Skipper? Captain, sir, wake up. No drifting off. It's Mr. Holmes, sir. Come to help me. Alec. You there, Alec? I'm right here, Skipper. I, I, I'm all smashed up. Easy. Easy. Easy, does it, sir? I'm sick with pain. My, my guts are busted. Julie, have a look at the captain. You better put something on. Oh, I'm all right, thank you. Mr. Holmes, you're a brave man. Everybody's brave today. I saw you. You saved three people before the boat sank. If we live, you'll get a medal. Hello, Merritt. Welcome aboard, sir. Sparks. Sparks. He's adrift again, ma'am. Just as well. Well? Fractured skull, compound fracture of the left arm, and I think internal injuries. What can we do? Nothing. Can you set the arm? But, Alec, a compound fracture. You won't last, or some old man die. The skipper's got the same pinched look and the same yellow color. Stow that. No luck, no luck. We haven't got a ready chance. I said stow it. I'll do my best. Wait. All hands. Have we got a doctor in the boat? Anyone in the sea? A doctor? See her, Cookie? Cookie, is she there? See what, sir? The ship. Can you see the ship? The ship? But skipper, sir, the ship's gone. Of course we can see her. Plain as day. Will she stay afloat? Not a chance, sir. Is she going? Yes, Paul. She's going. White water around her aft funnel. There she goes. Slid in as neat as a dolphin between the swells. She's gone. Keep clear of the ship. We're well away, sir. Captain, sir. Alec. Alec. I... I'm, I'm a dead man. The ship and I are dead. Hang on, Paul. We'll pull you out. I cannot hold command. The boat is yours. Do you hear me? I hear you, sir. I'm a witness, sir. Mr. Holmes is in command. Alec. The ring. Sir? My left hand. The ring. Take it. Oh. It was given to me as a token of my first command. Keep it. It's yours now. Paul, I... Save as many as you can, Alec. With God's help, save as many as you can. With God's help, sir.
Skipper. Skipper? He's dead. Off he went as neat as a pig, and not even a prayer to be said for him. We'll pass his body over the side. Without a proper funeral? We've got the living to worry about. It's even, Mr. Holmes. Take his clothes, we'll need them. But, sir... That's my first order. Yes, sir. Mr. Holmes! That old shark is hanging around again. Right off there, sir. Yeah, I can almost feel him snapping at my backside. Mac, any repellent left? Just two packs, Alec. I think we'd better use it here, you know. If we get underway, it's not going to be worth much. Use one of them. Have that on, will you? Sally. Yes, Mr. Kelly. Tell Alec. Tell Mr. Holmes that I'm here. He's pretty busy, Mr. Kelly. All hands. May I have your attention, please? I'm sorry to tell you that Captain Darrow has just died. He has turned over command of the boat to me. I'm the witness. In the event that anything happens to me, the command will pass to Mr. McKinley, who now becomes exec. Understood, Mac? Affirmative, sir. Any questions? We don't need questions. We need answers. Please pass the captain's revolver to Miss White. Okay, Skipper. Julie, go get it. Unload it. Cookie, did you check the locker on the boat? No, sir. We'll do it as soon as we pass the old man over. Aye, aye, sir. He must have expected a mutiny. Sharks, more likely, sir. Load this. No. Like that. Sparks. Yes, sir? Give us a hand with the captain. Hang on to the blanket. We may need it. I've got no stomach for this, sir. You think I have? A little prayer, maybe? Will somebody speak a prayer for the captain? I will, Mr. Holmes. Thank you. Lord Jesus Christ, into thy hands we commit his soul. Amen. Gently now, Sparks. Slowly. Mr. Holmes, don't forget us down there. All right, Sam, I won't. Is that a dog? Have you got a dog taking room in that boat? Be still, do you hear? Have you got a dog taking room in that boat? Have you got a dog Be quiet, do you hear? Look at him. Look at him. The blasted hound's as big as an elephant. You're going to let us poor blokes wet our tails down here while he keeps his iron dry? I've got a right to get in the boat. There's the captain's place. He's gone. And that dog. That makes two places. I said I heard you. Yes, sir, yes, sir, but it ain't fair, sir. I heard you. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Mr. Holmes, please don't throw the dog over. He can't help himself. He'll just swim till he drowns. Who are you? My name is Aubrey Clark. I, I'm a playwright. Oh, yes. Mr. Holmes, the dog probably only weighs 70 pounds. Surely that 70 pounds isn't enough to kill him for. Mr. Holmes, I'll go over the side myself. I'll go in the sea myself. I can cling to a line, but Baba can't. Throw that dog overboard and let him out aboard! If you raise your voice and attempt to dictate command of this company once more, I'll cut you loose. Do you understand? I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. It's a fascinating moral problem. Yeah, well, it don't fascinate me hardly at all. 
Why don't someone cost the runny out in front of the sharks? Then one of us can go aboard. Preferably me. The dog stays aboard. That's very decent of you, Mr. Holmes. Very decent. Decent? I consider it an outrage. That was an order, not a request for an opinion, General. Do you know who I am, Captain? Major General Barrington. The dog. Therefore, you are aware that I am cognizant of the nature of command. I have commanded everything from a squad to a division in my time. Excuse me, General, I want to make a check of the injured. I haven't finished with this dog business. I have. Have you ever been in command before? Have you ever commanded a ship? No. As one with more experience of command, I'd like to tell you that you are responsible for our lives. All of us, including those in the sea. Now, if I were in command... Well, you're not that... in command here, General. I am. Now, we're at sea. If you do not obey orders, we have what is known as a mutiny. Right or wrong, I give the orders, and right or wrong, I enforce them. You and who else? Any further questions, General? At this point, I feel we should all rise and sing the Star Spangled Banner in honor of our brave captain. I shall consider that a threat, Holmes. You'd better settle down, sir. I thought you were a reasonable man, McKinley. How can you justify the dog? I don't. I take orders, and so will you, sir. We should be located within about 72 hours. But if something should go wrong, then the picture changes. We don't know how long we may drift here. Maybe two weeks. Maybe more. So the dog stays. He's important. A lot more important than you, General. Why? We can't eat you. Now I want to check. How many injured in the boat? Raise your hands. Me, sir. Merritt? What happened? When she blew her, I hit her bulkhead hands down, saved my skull, broke both wrists. Pain? Only when I move them, sir. Don't move them. You, madam, what's your name? Ruth Spencer, Captain. My arm. What happened to it? It's gashed. I think it cut an artery. We put a tourniquet on it when she first got in the boat. How long ago was that? Right after the sinking. Sinking? Is yours waterproof? Yes. But that was three hours ago. Is there a first aid kit in the locker? Just dug it out, sir. Thank you. Have you got a knife, Mac? No. Has a tourniquet been on all the time? Yes, to stop the bleeding. Didn't anyone think of loosening it every 20 minutes to prevent gangrene? I was pretty busy, Julie. Is it all right? Is it going to be all right? Anyone else? Yes. Your name? Ferroni, Michael Ferroni. I'm okay, Doc, but the lady in front of me is hurt. She's breathing short and sharp. That's my wife, Jim. Who are you? George Kilgore. Are you all right? Yes, thanks. He's not, he's not. My wife, she was thrown. I think her ribs are broken on the right side. Daddy, my head hurts. The boy's all right, he's just got a black eye. Julie, check Mrs. Kilgore. Yes, as soon as I finish here. You're both very kind. Mr. Holmes. You, sir? Daniel Kane reporting a shark which is getting uncomfortably affectionate. Yeah. He's looking at me as if I was a steak and kidney pie. Mac, any repellent left? That's the better end of it. Use it. Anyone else? You too, Solly? I'm happy days in Dixie. It's Mr. Kelly, the deck officer. Where is he? Down under me here in the bilge. Sparks, take my place and trim ship. Hello, brave captain. That's not very funny. Kelly. 
Hi, old buddy. Let's have a look. Don't deadpan me, old buddy. I'm seven waves away. How'd it happen? Below. Checking the air conditioner. Wham! Now I'm full of that air conditioner. Screws, nuts, and bolts at air conditioning and me. We'll pull you out. You're a dreamer. No, I mean it. You got problems, buddy. One you know. Just give me the stuff and let me alone. I've had it. Shut your trap. Sure, old buddy. Captain. Captain. My name's John Hayden. Are we going to be all right? I'm sure we are. You wouldn't fool us, would you? Sparks? Yes, sir? Were there any ships in our vicinity? Yes, one, sir. The Lincoln Castle. What is she? A British cruiser, sir. How far? 200 miles north, sir. I wouldn't worry, Mrs. Hayden. I never worry. And I'm not Mrs. Hayden. My name is Edith Middleton. Uh, Mrs. Arthur Middleton, that is. Mrs. Arthur J. Middleton? Yes. But I... We stayed up rather late last night after the gala. To see the sun rise. It was all quite mad and gay. Until the accident. Yes. Your husband is alive and well. Arthur was born safe. He always muddles through. I'm the only dangerous thing that ever happened to him. He was very worried about you. Arthur always worries. As long as he's safe, don't you start worrying, brave captain. At least, not about him. Thanks for the thought. Alec. I've finished with Mrs. Spencer. Kelly. What about Mrs. Kilgore? I'll check her. Hayden, change places with me and be careful. Hello, Sonny. How goes it? Hello, Kelly. Hi, sweetie. You, Mrs. Kilgore? There's a sharp pain, very sharp, when I breathe. Can you stand it? Is there any choice? We could ease the pain a bit. Mr. Kelly's going to need this stuff badly before we're rescued. Give it to him. I'm all right. I just can't get a deep breath. You, sir. I'm afraid I swallowed a lot of fuel oil. Please, bring him in the boat. He's been in the water so long. Very soon now. Just sit still. If I could just get a breath, a deep breath. Alec. Ms. Kilgore's ribs are broken. You got any tape? Find up a rib cage. You can use one of these blankets here, make a tent for her. The boy's okay. All right, but... What is it? Kelly won't live. I know. Make it easy for him. Mrs. Spencer's arm is no good, Alec. It's going to have to be amputated. We can't do it here. She may be lucky. What do you mean? There's a warship on the way. Got to be with us in five or six hours. There'll be a doctor on board. Then we are going to make it? You bet we're going to make it. Just keep your fingers crossed. Keep your fingers crossed at the weather holes this way. With the captain's permission, it ain't no fun down here anymore. We'll start the ships in a few minutes. Yes, sir. This is the longest bath I've ever had. Sparks, move forward and trim ship. Peter, would you sit over there while I fix your mother? Here. Here, take this, but be careful. Nothing on the horizon, sir. Hell. All hands, I want to check you out. Okay, check these off as I call them out. Aye, sir. Mr. McKinley, Miss White, Mr. Um, Ferroni. What? Ferroni. Mr. Ferroni, Mrs. Spencer, Sally Daniels, 
Aubrey Clark, Mrs. Kilgore, young Kilgore, Frank Kelly in the bills, General Barrington, Mrs. Hay... Uh, Would you mind Middleton, skipping your dressing gown off? Mr. Hayden, Mrs. Knudsen... First aid kit, please. Sparks, you and myself. There will be 17 in the boat, sir. 17 in the boat. In the sea, there's, um, Mario Pasquale, Mr. Kilgore, Joe, Digger, and Sam. There's, uh, Daniel Kane, Willie Hawkins. Is that all? Mickey Stokes, sir. Hello, Mickey. Edward Wilton here. Stokes, Wilton. Is that all? Nine in the sea, sir. Twenty-six souls in all. Twenty-six. Mac, did you check the water tank? One full gallon? One gallon? Is that all? But, Holmes, that's, that's only four quarts. For twenty-six people? Twenty-seven, General. You forgot the dog. Well, that's less than... Less a than... little more than a cup apiece. But it may be a couple of days before they find us. Maybe. It's not enough. It, it's just not enough. Yellow. What did you say? The sky's yellow. We may get rain. I'm in knuckles, Reiki, sir. There'll be weather. Rain means wind, and we don't want wind. Food check. 16 ounces of biscuits, 16 ounces of barley sugar, 16 ounces of condensed milk, sir. Is that all for this mob? It wasn't meant for this mob. It was meant for nine men. The boat was built to take nine, not 27. Mr. Holmes, Mr. Holmes, shark! That old fast shark is coming in! Mr. Holmes, shark! 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 Shark, shark, shark! It's coming in! Mr. Holmes! Down! Down! Everybody! Down! Come in! Come in! Get in, Mr. Holmes! Get in, Mr. Holmes! Get in, Mr. Holmes! You missed! You missed! Mr. Holmes! Mr. Holmes! You missed! Hit it! Hit it quick! Kill it! Get nearer, Mr. Holmes! Get nearer, Mr. Holmes! You got him! You got him! You got him! You got him, sir! Sally, you and Clark failed. Barrington Hayden failed. With what? You and Merritt bail. Now his wrists are broken. You and Sparks bail. Everyone bail every drop of water out of this boat. Mac, are you all right? I'm okay, but I can still feel the breeze of those bullets across my belly. Now steady down, everyone. Steady her! Steady her! Steady her! Okay, you did make a locker check. Yes, sir. One beauty pistol, sir. One box of pear shells, one fishy tackle, one bottle of pork line bait, uh, baleen tins, jackknife with opener, a stout line. What's that cannon? Four hand flares. It's a gun for shooting rescue flares. One box compass in locker. Yeah. The first aid kit and a ship repair kit, sir. All right, stow it. Yes, sir. No gin, brave captain? No gin, Mrs. Middleton. Pity I'd have given almost anything for a nice cold martini. Very funny. I'd sell my soul for a drink of water. All hands, may I have your attention, please? We are shipwrecked in the South Atlantic. That's hardly news. 1,500 miles in that direction is Africa. Now, there are too many in this boat. We'll all have to take our turns in the sea. There will be one meal a day at night. There will be one sip of water per day in the morning. Anyone attempting to steal more than his or her share will be shot. Anyone refusing to take their turn in the sea will be thrown overboard. Now, I don't mean to alarm you, but that's the standard drill for disaster. Fortunately, we're in luck. There's a fast cruiser on her way to us. From the time of our SOS, it should take her about roughly 10 hours to reach us. As it's been about four since, since it happened, she should be with us in about five or six hours. There was no SOS. That's Tony. What did he say? No SOS. Digger, we got no forwarding address. But Sparks, the Lincoln Castle, you told me. Now take it easy, boy. I don't want any mistakes. Tell me about the distress signal. You were on duty. Yes. They acknowledged your SOS. No. Did they acknowledge your CQ? 
It was awful. Sparks, boy, I'm talking to you. And I want you to answer me very carefully. Did they acknowledge your general call? No. Why not? I didn't send anything. But you must have sent a distress signal. You had seven minutes. You must have sent an SOS and got an acknowledgement. You hear me? Oh. You hear what I'm saying? You sent the SOS. You had to. Alex! Alex, seven stop minutes. it! Take it easy, Mr. Holmes. Well, well, <laughs> even brave <laughs> captain is human after all. Shut up, man. You had to send something. Shut up. You all right, if you there. think you can handle them alone. Now, either for heaven's sake. You had seven minutes! Boy, don't understand, sir. Jimmy. Jimmy. Yes? Do you know who I am? Julie White. <laughs> oh, Miss White, it was horrible. Oh, it I... was horrible. He was squashed just like a June bug. He was just opening the door when the explosion went off. Oh, Jimmy. I just received a weather report from Cape Town. I acknowledged an SK. And I got up to take the report to the captain when when the main transmitter shook off the wall and crashed. It short-circuited. And just then he came in. Hit the emergency transmitter and now take position, he said. Who, Jimmy? Why, Mr. Lansing, the chief operator. And then the forward mast fell in. Cut the radio shack right in half. It hit Mr. Lansing. It hit him square! Don't think of it again. Don't ever imagine it or see it or dream about it or anything. Thank you, Miss White. There was no distress signal, sir. The emergency rig was smashed by the mast. There was no time to jury rig. No message of any kind was sent, sir. That's the truth. Now comes the time of the Spartans. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. So am I, Sparks. So am I. going to be a long way home. There'll be a search anyhow. Without radio contact, they'll suspect something's wrong. Why, the, they'll send planes to look for me. That man's a fool. Meanwhile, it seems to me that you want to organize us. Do something, man, if you're in charge. You can't just sit about in the middle of the ocean. We can't just hope for the best. We need action. Thank you, General. I was just about to organize shifts for the men in the sea. If it's action you want, you can join the first shift. Huh? All the able-bodied men will alternate over the side. First shift? You, General. Cookie here. And Mr. Um... Ferroni. Ferroni, Sally Daniels, Sparks, and Mr. Hayden. You men in the sea will come in singly as soon as the others are in the sea. There will be two-hour shifts from now on. All right, all of you, over the side and carefully. You too, Mr. Hayden, overboard. I'll take a shift too, brave captain. No. Why not, brave captain? I'm neither hurt, seasick, nor pregnant. And I'm an excellent swimmer. Thank you, no. She's right, Alec. The women will remain aboard at all times. I don't agree at all. Edith. Edith! I'm extremely able-bodied, as you can see. Hey, you're all right, lady. Can I have your life belt? Sure. Have you lost your senses? You can't come aboard like that. That's brave captain's problem. All right, trim ship, we're taking water over the side. We'll start the first shift. 
One at a time. Careful now. Off the ends, never off the beam or we'll capsize. One at a time. All right, Mr. Hayden, overboard. Come on, darling. Last one in's a rotten egg. Counterbalance, counterbalance, keep going! <laughs> Stay close to the boat. Oh. Hang together and don't the struggle. Tank the tank Save the bailing tins. The bailing tins. Save the bailing tins. Mr. Holmes! Mr. Holmes! Mr. Holmes! Come on. Come in and help hold the boat up while we bail. Sparks, come aboard and help bail. Max, take a count. Everyone here? Everyone accounted for? Cookie, give me a bailing tin. Anyone missing, Mac? All safe and accounted for, sir. All hands, we've been very lucky. Cookie secured the locker. Our food is safe, our water is safe. It's a miracle. Yes, it's a miracle. From now on, we'll keep some way on this boat. From now on, we'll also keep this ship trimmed. I don't need to tell you that we couldn't survive this again. Mr. Holmes. I think I speak for all of us, but I say thank you. Captain. Brave Captain. Think about it, love. Try not to think about it. Mr. Holmes! Mr. Kilgore? With due respect, are we just going to sit here until we rot? <coughs> My wife's badly hurt. We need help. I give you no argument. Do something, man! Do something! Well, what would you suggest? I'm... Sorry, sir, I... <coughs> I'm sorry, sir, I... Very, very sorry. Shouldn't we pull for Africa? 1,500 miles, it'd take us 50 days. Couldn't we try? No. You couldn't even reach Julie and me this morning. You couldn't row 30 yards. If only we didn't have so many people in this boat. But we have. We can't just lie here. We go through the food and water pretty fast. We'll go through it a lot faster if we try to row a boat with this weight. Well, I don't know. You've got to do something. Work on it. Alec, Kelly wants to see you. How does he feel? Kelly, feel any better? Gotta hang on. We may get lucky. Lucky? Huh? That's a hot one. I'm out of luck. You're running out of it. 
Sally. Mr. Kelly? Sally, tell us, Skipper, about your luck. Well, there I was in this poker game in the smoking lounge after we wrapped up the band for the night. All of a sudden, I'm staring down at three lovely aces, the prettiest bullets you ever saw. Bet half my stack, draw two cards. Wham! We hit the mine. Sure, the Skipper. Full house. That's right. A full house at the wrong time. That's what you've got, old buddy. A full house at the wrong time. Something's got to break. The weather will break. We can't take any weather. She'll sink right under us. Well? Well? That leaves just one thing. What? You've got to evict some of the tenants. What? Anyone who can't pay the rent. Negative. Like me. I think you're out of your mind. Then you head for the east. Negative, negative! Don't bring it up again. Okay, old buddy. I thought... I thought you had guts enough to save half of them instead of losing them all. Brave captain, what are we going to do? Pray, madam, and mean it. Light off there, sir? <laughs> Where? Lost it now, sir. The moon and the water's tricky. Do you think it'd be best to fire off a flare, sir, just in case, sir? Careful how you load that, sir. I once all had it with one of them shells. Killed him, of course, but the magnesium went on burning. Couldn't put it out. some water for her. No. What? Don't waste the water on her. But you must understand, there's only so much food and water and I've I've got to save as many as I can. I'm responsible. Yes, you are responsible. He's right. Mustn't waste the water on the ones who can't make it. Mr. Holmes, I have a suggestion to make. Might help to pass the time. I think we are most of us strangers to one another. Couldn't we introduce ourselves and perhaps explain what made us come in this cruise? Alec, don't get to know them too well. Carry on, Mr. Kane. Mr. Kilgore? I'm a nuclear physicist. Atom bombs, you mean? No. No, I was working on an atomic reactor for aircraft. Atomic power, that is. I overdid it. The doctor prescribed a long ocean voyage. Mr. Clark? Nothing to tell. 
I've been round the world many times. I do it to get away. I was writing a play, as usual, about life and death, as usual. And you, Mr. Hayden? Without being stuffy, I do think this is all a lot of rot. Well, just as you like. Well, after all, who cares? With me, there's a choice of this cruise or the house at Antibes. So, when Edith insisted I come along, I came. Darling, I never really appreciated before how really stupid you are. What did I say? More than enough. Mrs. Knudsen. My name is Dorothy Knudsen. I used to be an opera singer. I got all your records. You were great. I still say your Mimi Labohin taps a lot. And she sings very good Italian for a foreigner. You're very kind. I mean every word. Won't you tell us why you came in this cruise? I was in the way. I'm an old woman. Old people get in the way. My children thought a cruise would do me good because I was in the way. We are civilized today. In the olden days, they used to turn the old people out to die in the jungle or the desert. Today, they send them on a world cruise. Mr. Holmes! I think Mr. Wilton's dead. Cookie, take the teller. Aye, aye, sir. I can't see. Give me a hand, Flair. Yes, sir. No pulse. Iris is wide open. He's dead. Mickey, take his life jacket. Squads ahead, we're in for a blow. Holmes, this boat will never last if the wind rises. We shall swap. Take it easy, General. Isn't there something, anything we can do? Every man and woman on board will bail. We're taking water over the side. Bail, that's an order. There aren't enough tins. Then use your hands, but bail. Julie! Take it easy, Mr. Kelly. Julie, help me! You're all right, Mr. Kelly. You've got Kelly, it, take it me. easy. Don't move. It's awful. Be wrong. still. It hurts too much. I know, I know. Julie, give me another shot. I've just given you one. No, you didn't. There was a long while ago. You got to help me. I can't. Julie, it's more than I can stand. Give me a shot. There isn't any left. It's all you've gone. Oh, no. You mustn't give up. You mustn't. Never mind about me. It's him. He's got to listen to me. Julie. He can save it, but it won't be easy. Hey, nurse. Miss White, Mrs. Spencer's burning with fever. Her arm is swollen twice its size. Kelly, I've got to go. Julie, be kind to him when it happens. Please, Mr. Holmes. Time to alternate the ships. I've been in the water a long time. Get me aboard, sir. My wrists are swollen. I'm, I'm right through. Please, Mr. Holmes, I'm cold and cold. Stow it, all of you. The ships are off. We 
We've got the light in this motor, she'll capsize. I'm freezing to death. Fools, fools, I'm taking here. My guts are dribbling. It won't work, Holmes. You won't have a prayer hanging on if it's a real storm. You can't put me over. I'm not a very good swimmer. I'll swim for you, darling. Shut up, Edith, you don't know what you're saying. They can't put me over. Don't worry, darling, they'll only put the able-bodied over. Shut up, shut up, shut up! Mr. Hayden, bail. He'll be all right, brave captain. He's just frightened. He'd be a fool if he wasn't. Mr. Clark, I said bail. I'm sorry, I, I can't. Uh, I'm afraid I'm sick. I'm very sick. He can't help it, Alec. He's seasick. There's nothing I can do for Mrs. Spencer. The arm is gangrenous. Mrs. Kilgore has a splintered rib. She's coughing blood. Kelly... All right, all right. All of you, bail! Keep bailing! Have you gone crazy, Mr. Kelly? You're locked up the whole room! Sit down there, sir! Well, right. alone, I got work to do. Man's hard insane. Work. Will someone stop him before he capsizes the boat? Listen, all head! I've had it. What good? She's had it. So has she had it. Kelly, you'll hurt yourself. Be careful! I'm right. Ask the skipper if I'm not right. Kelly, I'm ordering you to sit down. You can't order a dead man. Make this man sit I'm down. I'm not going to sit down, so listen. Mr. Holmes is an honorable man. He's trying to save your lives, but he can't. But he's got to. He can't. Some of you are dead already. He can't save all your lives. There are too many people in this boat. Kelly, dear God, please. I'm right. This boat was built for nine. It'll stretch to 12 or 14. But he can't save 26. Can I stow it, stow it? That's a rotten door. He's got to put at least 12 over the side. The supercargos have got to go or else you'll all drown. There's food and water for nine. It'll stretch to 14. It'll be nothing for 26. Alec, don't give food to the dead. They'll just drag you down to the grave with them. Save it for the living. They deserve it. It's your duty as master. Do it, Alec. Do it. Like this. <laughs> comes after me, I'll go under. I'm going after them! You stay aboard! What? That's an order! Skipper! Kelly! Kelly! Well, <laughs> busy in the old buddy. I hope it's not too soon. Sail. You've handled Dory. Yes, sir. Give me younger days. Can this boat make it? She could make it come wind or water, sir. If you lightened her, she's a seaworthy skiff, sir. It's time. What do you mean, sir? All hands. What I am going to say is not pleasant. 
What I'm going to do is not pleasant. Now I want your attention. Don't listen to Kelly. Don't listen to me. He's dead. He's now, always home. Down. You all heard Mr. Kelly. Kelly was out of his mind, darling. He was crazy with pain. I found him very sane. Mr. Kelly asked whether all of us should drown or whether some should go over the side so that others may survive. I'll take my chances with all. No, you won't, Mac. Some must go overboard. To hang on the ropes? There'll be no hanging on the ropes. The boat won't take it. What happens to them who goes overboard? They will be in God's hands. Who goes over and who stays? I got a wife and kids at home. I've got three little nippers. You mustn't do it. I'm against it. We could draw lots. There will be no lots. But you'll have to draw lots, Alec. You surely don't expect the men to volunteer to drown themselves. There will be no volunteers. Sir, you mean, sir, you'll do the choosing of your own mind? I will. There is a man. It's a terrible responsibility, Alec. I don't like this. It's the law of the sea, General. I don't like it either, but it's always been women and children first. Some of us men will take our chances in the sea to give the women a chance in the boat. Negative. What did you say, sir? Negative. It will not be women and children first. The weaklings must go. You can't do it. You mustn't do it. It's wrong. It's murder. I'm against it. I want only the strong, who can row 1,500 miles to Africa and walk ashore alive. I want the strong who won't fall faint when the food gives out and the water runs dry. I want only those who can make it and not those who can't. I won't go along with that, Captain. I vote negative. You have no vote, Mac. All right. That's far enough. Have you lost your senses, Alec? Listen to me. Get back to your station. It's cold-blooded murder. This is murder. The weight of a pair of dying women, of seasick, useless men. This weight, so completely useless, will destroy us all. No, the living have a chance. It's a survival of the fittest. But you just can't throw an unconscious woman overboard. I'm about to issue the order. I won't obey it, Captain. I will take full responsibility. Negative. There will be no negative. Negative, negative. I warn you, Alec, it won't work. It's jungle law. It's the only civilized way to save us. Civilized? The whole point of civilization is for the strong to protect the weak. We're past that. We're in the last extremity. The last extremity is where civilized man lives his finest hour. Would you like your finest hour here and now, Professor? I'm not speaking about Nor myself. Nor am I. We have a chance for survival. And I'm going to take it for those who deserve it. Then it shall be the survival of the strongest. As it always has been. Thank you, Professor. I'm a woman. I'm a weakling. I'm supercargo. Will you put me over? No. You're cheating. You're breaking your own law. Because you love me, you're cheating. That's not true. You're a nurse. You'll be needed aboard. Alec, don't do it. Mac, I order you to slip Mr. Spencer over the side. You've got the wrong boy, Alec. I can't do it. Mac, I'm in command here. I can't take no for an answer. I know. That doesn't leave me much choice. Nor me. For the last time, I'm ordering you to slip Mrs. Spencer over the side. Don't. Don't do it, Alec. Aye, aye, sir. Put a life jacket on her. What do you think you're doing? I'm going with her. No, you don't. I need you here. Look, Alec, if I stay aboard and go to try to stop you, that I don't want to do me. it. Mac, you know I don't want to do it. But I've got to save as many as I can, and this is the only way to do it. I know. And if it was my boat, I'd have to do the same. But it's your boat. I order you to stay. Alec, do you want to kill me? Mac! You know I'll have more chance in the sea. Mr. Ferroni, Mr. Kane, you will pass Mrs. Spencer over the side to Mr. McKinley. Only at gunpoint. Duly noted, Professor. Propelling gear. Good 
Good luck, sir. Secure from rowing. Mario, come aboard. Mr. Kilgore? Yes? I'm sorry. No. No, Mr. Holmes. Quiet, darling. You'll only hurt yourself. You're seasick. Your lungs are full of fuel oil. You'll be no help at all. I'll go. Just keep my wife and son aboard. I'll go. She's as bad off as you are. I'm afraid we'll have to lose both of you. Mario, put your life jacket on Mrs. Kilgore. I want to be with you, Bobby. I want to be with you and Daddy. You can come with us, son. The boy stays. I'm his father. The boy wants to come with us. King Holmes, one less mouth to feed. No, no darling, no. Let you Peter stay. You can't put them over. They ain't got a prayer. You can't separate them from the kid. I've got Mr. Peroni, the boy will be your responsibility. See that he stays in the boat. He's my son. He wants to come with us. It's my decision. The boy is the only future. He stays. Dear God, no. I want to be with you, Bobby. I want to be with you and Daddy. Daddy. The kid's going to have a break, Mr. Kilgore. I'll look out for him like it was my own. If it's going to be this way, I'll take care of him. It's only logical, Kilgore. Oh, yes, it's logical. Probably the logical thing to do. Different circumstances might even have done it myself. But they'll hang you for it, Holmes! And with my blessing! Mario, you'll pass Mrs. Kilgore over the <coughs> side. <coughs> Easy does it. Easy does it. You'll see them again. I'll get this boat turned and go back for them. Don't keep you! Don't keep you, boy! Leave it to me. Come on, Bobby. don't let them see you crying. You'll see them again, I promise you. Bobby. Just leave it to me. Secure from rowing! Willie Hawkins, come aboard! I thought you was never gonna say it. Willie Hawkins! Put your life jacket on Mr. Clark. Mr. Holmes, stop this. You've got to stop this. So it, Sparks. Mr. Kane, you and Willie Hawkins will pass Mr. Clark off the bow. Mind the dog is leashed. At gunpoint only. Professor, we will assume that I have pointed the gun at you every time I issue you an order. It'll pass. I'm... I'm really... I'm really very strong. I... I can help. I, I can, I can roll. I can even, I can. Come back! Let's go! I told you to mind the dog. I couldn't stop him. I'm afraid the dog proved just as intractable as Mr. McKinley. We can row over and get him back. The dog happened to love his master. McKinley loved his fellow man. In such cases, death doesn't seem to matter. It'll matter a great deal if you don't keep bailing. Rowers, fast stroke. Digger, pass up your life preserver. Board at the bow. Holy Mother of God, bless us now at the hour of our death. Amen. Mark, put the jacket on Mrs. Newton. I can't, I can't, sir. I just can't, sir. Alec, no, don't, don't. Please, help me with it, young man. The whole point is to save lives. Not lose them. No! Cookie, lend a hand. Under gun point, sir. You too, Cookie. It's not my responsibility, sir. Duly noted. Put it on. Take the tiller. Thank you. There's nothing I can do. It's very strange. I'm sorry. I'm very, very sorry. I forgive you, Mr. Holmes. Now, if you'll help me. You can't! You can't do it like this! 
From now on, you'll do exactly as you're told. to let you go, boy. Not me! Not me! Let me stay! I want you to look after Mrs. Newts. Give me a break, Mr. Hope. I'm young. I'm strong. I'm 18! I'll stand my watch at the sticks. I'll row to the handspring. I'll work! But I'll you're work. too little for the long row, Mr. Mickey. Hope. It's the long haul I'm thinking of. The long, hard row to Africa. Mr. Hope! Don't leave me here! Absolutely. Only thing to do. Better some than all. I want to come up. Lord, no, oh, sir. Right. Sparks, untie. What are you doing? It's no use. Your wrists are broken. You can't row. I'm not a cabin boy, home. To be cut loose like a spoiling child. You don't qualify. Then you'll all go. Hey! Get capsizing us! Get off the beach! Get, get off! Ah! Ah! Fast rope! Ah! He has no life preserver! He has merits. Cookie, check me on the counter board. Poor John. He'd have gone anyway. He didn't qualify either. Hark at the iron butterfly. I hope you stand up for the job, Mr. Hawkins. It may take more than muscle. Fifteen. It's a better number than thirteen, sir. No, it isn't, but it'll have to do. All hands, row so I can turn her into the wind. If you're not rowing, bail. Everybody work. There'll be no dead wood aboard. Like the professor said, it's the survival of the fittest. Not the fittest, only the strongest. It does seem rather a short exchange, doesn't it? An atomic scientist for two ape men. Huh? A brilliant playwright for a racketeer. A famous opera singer for a devoted coward. I'm getting tired of your insolence, madam. Are you, General? You're no bargain. I know. Why are the wicked always so strong? Tell me, brave captain. Skip the wisecracks. I wasn't being funny. You are brave. I saw it from the first. You really think it's right. And I agree with you. Because you were one of the lucky ones who stays. At least I'm staying on my own power, not because of... Quiet, both of you. But it's such a tingly thought, brave captain. What Stoic. if she can't take it? What if she does fall weak and wan by the wayside? Do we still water her and feed her and carry her because she's the captain's lady? The answer is very simple. If I fail to measure up, if I fail to take my turn, if I fall sick and useless, I go over the side like anyone else. There are no exceptions. Nobody goes over no more. Mr. Kane, take the boy. 
That's a fact. Nobody goes over no more. What's your point, Mr. Ferroni? I've got a family. I've got feelings, human feelings like a human being, not like an iceberg like you, mister. I've been thinking of my wife and kids. I understand your feelings. Sit down. I'm going to give you a chance which is more than you gave the others. Turn the boat and head back. You crazy fool, it's all done now. We're in a storm, you landlubber. We're not turning back. We go back for them. Toss that knife here, Ferroni. I'll toss it right into your chest, Captain. And I can do it. Ferroni, drop the knife. You can't shoot me. You've used up the six slugs in that gun. Hold it. Throw it overboard or you'll get it. Beery pistol, sir. In the locker. Last call. Negative. The revolver. Loaded. Ammunition in my pocket. What's your shoulder, sir? Loaded. Yes, sir. Pull it out of here. Pull it out. I'll put a dressing on. That can wait. Sally, Sam, give your life preservers to the women. Now listen to me, all of you. If anybody else wants to die, go over now. But if you want to live, row! Row till your hearts burst! An hour from now, this ocean will be a nightmare! So row! Row! Keep way on this boat! Row! Row! Row and fail! Row!
Nurse! Yes, Peter? Nurse, I'm thirsty. Alec. Alec, have you issued the water rations? All of them, sir. Won't have to be embalmed. Sea's taken care of that. I can't believe it. I've never been through anything like it. This is my first time at sea. We'd have never made it. I'm telling you, the skipper saved every blasted one of us. You bet your tail he did. Look at those hands. Look at those hands. Last night, that big sea, that one that busted right over us, that was a seventh wave. We got a good boy. He was right all the time. Was he? Still breaching jungle law, Dr. Kane? Not exactly, madam. I'm alive and I should be dead. I'm aware of that. Brave captain was right. Right or wrong, at least he had the guts to make a decision. Which all your civilized hypocrisy couldn't have managed. The man was right and I said so. I said so. You don't agree, Miss White? Are you still wrestling with your soul, Miss White? It's good to be alive. Everybody would have drowned. Perhaps not. Perhaps something might have happened. Nothing happened but the storm. Suppose the storm had missed us. It didn't. But suppose it did. How could we tell? How right would it have been then? But it didn't. What's the difference? It's all over. Now we're going to make it. Yes, to live in shame. Listen, mates. Listen. The way I see it, the skipper's been a lonely man. And I think it's fitting that a spokesman should say a word to him for us all. A word of thanksgiving. And a word of comfort. Cookie. You are a lovely hypocrite. Ah, oh, miss, I'm not denying I doubt it. But now it's time for us to, to share the load. But, Alec, it's yours. Don't waste it on me. Sparks. Let me see. Let me see. <sighs> Mrs. Spencer and I have something in common. I'll put a new dressing on. Sam, please. You're wasting your time. Mr. Clary? Yes, sir? If I were you, I... I would hold a due easterly course. Even with tide and current, you... you must eventually make a landfall somewhere on the coast of Africa. Me, sir? You should row in shifts of four, an hour a shift, 20 hours a day until you get there. No, Alec, no. I don't understand, You must sir. conserve your food and water until they all hate you. You have a good sound boat. With a little luck, you should make it. But why do you tell me this, sir? You're about to assume command. Alec, you mustn't do it. You Mr. can't Clary, do it. You've got to try, Alec. On my right hand is Listen a ring. To me. Take oh. it. given to me as a token of my first command. 
It's yours now. Try to save as many as you can. Captain Ope, sir. Yes, Cookie? As spokesman for everybody on board, I wish to tender the thanks, the grateful thanks of the souls you've saved. So the entire compliment wants to say that we join you, sir, in the rightness and the Save the kind words for Mr. Clary. He may need them later on. I don't get you, sir. When I made the rules, I said there'd be no dead weight aboard. Alec, Alec. There are no exceptions. But nobody's fallen down the job, sir. You're wrong. Oh, no, sir. You can't do that, sir. We can't let you go, sir. We need you. Alec. I love you. Take the watch. The skipper's going to jettison himself. Brave captain, no. Skipper! Skipper, come back! Astern of us. I think she's in that wall of fog. Look. She's breaking through. Father gun, fire. Go on, dig on it, dig on it. There, go on, fire. There she is. Just a little bit too soon, brave captain. saying that that you all join me in the rightness and the responsibility. No, sir. Well, I mean, yes, sir, but not the way you mean, sir. It's not for me to say, sir. I never had no hand in it. it was orders, sir. It was orders. It was all orders. Now don't look at me. I had no part in it. You said it was your own responsibility. Not me, mister. Just you and that gun. You made us do it. You said you would shoot us if we didn't. Sorry. I tried to stop you. It was right. And a gunpoint, sir. Like the professor, you noted it at the time, sir. You're breathing, seeing, hearing, feeling. You're alive in another day because it was right. Yes, brave captain. It was right. I advise you to keep your mouth shut, madam. Right or wrong, it's not for us to say. It's for the law.
You better go sit with the others. Yes, sir. This is my place. It was right. I don't know whether it was right or wrong, Alec. All I know is whatever you did, you did truly. All hands. I want to thank you for your courage and help in this emergency. I thank God that you are safely out of it. Now we will all row for the ship. Slow stroke. All hands. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. belongs to you. Now, Mr. Clary, you'll help the ladies board the ship. What about you, sir? I can make it alone. which you have just seen is a true one. In real life, Captain Alexander Holmes was brought to trial on a charge of murder. He was convicted and given the minimum sentence of six months because of the unusual circumstances surrounding the incident. If you had been a member of the jury, how would you have voted? Guilty or innocent? Soon I hope you will be seeing Copa Productions' latest picture, Abandoned Ship. In it, I portray Alec Holmes, the executive officer of a luxury liner which sinks in mid-ocean. 
26 survivors find themselves in a lifeboat designed to hold only 12. As senior officer aboard after the captain dies, it is my fearful responsibility to decide which of the survivors shall live and which shall be cast overboard to die. Now, this theme has created considerable controversy. Was Holmes justified in doing what he did, or was he guilty of murder? Well, after you've seen the film, I'd like you to write and tell me what you think. The writer of the winning letter will receive as Columbia Pictures guest two round-trip tickets to Hollywood plus a week's vacation there, all expenses paid. In the lobby of this theater, you will find additional information concerning the contest. Please let me hear from you soon. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.